Hello, Abnormals. Welcome back to the Ministry of Abnormality. I am your host, O Abnormal, and today I'd like to talk about showing your art, and what I like to call the throw technique. Now, showing your art is, is something that every single artist has to deal with, and it's not easy. It's not just about visual artists. It's not just about those of us that are illustrators and, and stuff like that. Every single form of art uh, has this element to it, has this component of having to show to people what you made. Um, if you're a musician, you have to face the fact that eventually somebody has to listen to you uh, sing or play or whatever. If you are... Um, if you're an illustrator, you have to deal with the fact that you have to show your art to people. If you are a writer, you have to deal with the fact that eventually somebody has to read what you wrote. It's part of what we do. And it's an, it's an inescapable fact, is what I would call it. Now, you, you'll get a lot of artists that are going to say stuff like, well, I just draw for myself. I don't have to show it to anybody. And that's not necessarily untrue, right? Like, like, yeah, you can actually make art just for yourself and not want to show it to anybody and just it's for your own amusement or for your own benefit. But the truth of the matter is that if you want to be a professional, you got to show it. You got to eventually um, show your art to the world. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It, it, it gets difficult. It gets difficult, and a lot of people have trouble dealing with it. Now, a common mistake with showing your art to the world is that some people think that it's directly linked to how good you are. And I've heard plenty of times the argument that, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm making art, but I'm going to show it when, when I'm good enough. I'm not good enough yet. I've met a ton of artists that are kind of waiting for some magical moment of of art skill or something like that when they'll finally feel like their art is worthy of showing to the world. And I've had this discussion, I've had this conversation time and time again. Aspiring artists telling me, Yes, yes, I, I know, I know I have to show my work. I know. They, they, they even get annoyed by it. You, you tell them and they get very annoyed. I know, I know I have to show my work, but, but not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm going to, I need to perfect my skills. I need to improve. I need to be a lot better before, before I'm comfortable. And, and, and they play that card. They play the card that they're not comfortable. They play the card that, that they don't feel like they should. But here's the thing. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I've been an art teacher for a very long time. I've been teaching illustration at the university for, well, not illustration specifically for 12 years. I've been teaching at the university for 12 years, teaching illustration for 10. But anyway, I've seen this time and time again, and guess what? Guess what I've learned? Guess what I've discovered? The ability to show your work to the world is not related at all to your actual skill as an artist, to your actual skill level, or to your actual ability as an artist. It's not, it's not directly related at all. And that magical point that some people are hoping to reach where you feel like, okay, I'm ready. I can, I can share my art to the world. I'm good enough now. I'm ready. Yeah, that's never going to happen. That never comes. And think about it. It should never come. We should never want it to come. <laughs> okay, sorry. My mind just went a little bit dirty there. But yeah, we should never be expecting that moment to actually come because imagine that. Imagine that in your career, you are going to we reach... We Imagine that in your career, you're going to reach a moment when you say, okay, I'm good enough. How boring would that be? But, but one of the awesome things about what we do is that there's always room to improve. There's always, the goalpost is always moving ahead of us. Each and every time I improve my skills, 
I always find the next challenge. I have never, ever, ever been at a point where I thought art wasn't challenging anymore or where I thought that there was nothing for me to improve. And yeah, I think that if I did, it'd be kind of boring. So yeah, as even though it sounds bad, even though it doesn't sound very optimistic, you're never going to be good enough. You should never feel good enough. You should always feel like there's room for improvement. It's just part of what we do. And it's part of the fun. So if you're never going to feel good enough, then what are you waiting for? You're never going to be at a skill level that is going to make you post your art comfortably. And I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen time and time again. Artists that are amazing. Artists that are just, their skill level is incredible but they're not able to post their art. On the other hand, I've met artists that are just <laughs> absolutely unskilled, no good, horrible, horrible, horrible artists that have absolutely no problem posting their art. So I think it's pretty safe to say that in my experience and for what I've seen, the ability of showing your art to the world is not directly related to how skilled you are. It's something else. It's, I mean, I'm not saying it's not complicated. I'm not saying that it doesn't involve a bunch of other issues and mental issues and stuff like that. But it's not related to how good you are as an artist. Showing your work is not about that. Or being unable to show your work is not about that. But okay, so if being able to show your work is not going to get easier the better you get at your work, and if there's people out there that have absolutely no problem showing their work, no matter how unskilled they are. Okay, so it's not related. So, okay, how did I overcome it? Well, the way I overcame my anxiety or my problems or my issues with showing my work was I started a webcomic. Now, this is not the advice I'm giving you all. I'm not telling you all to start a webcomic. Although, if you want to start a webcomic, hey, that's awesome. But anyway, in 2004, I started a webcomic. And when I started the webcomic, I gave myself a schedule. Now, lucky for me, the way I was raised, I was raised to believe that one of the worst things a person can do is be late. That's one of the worst things a person can do. Be late. And that's the way my, my father, my father has always been incredibly strict with being on time. We were the kind of people that whenever we got invited to a party or something like that, we were always there first. Like we were always the ones sitting at the table while nobody else was there. We were always the first people in the theater. And that's the way it's been my whole life. My parents hammered into me that they would rather have me at school early before anybody else got to the school than be there late. And it, and it happened all throughout my childhood when I would go to school. Most of the time, I was the first kid to arrive at, at the school. And I was brought up to think that was better. That was better than being late. It's just the way I was brought up and, and, there's arguments to be had there, you know, about a balance and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, in my mind, it is hammered in. It's not going out that I would rather be many, many, many things other than late. So when I started a webcomic and I had a schedule, I started updating. I think I started updating like twice a week. Then I turned it into three times a week. Then I turned it into every day of the week. There was a time, there were a couple of years of my webcomic that I was updating seven days a week. And I never missed an update. And I wish I could say it was because I was that good. But that's not true. <laughs> that, that is not true at all. I mean, hopefully I, I was actually good. But the reason I never missed updates was not because I was not good. The reason I never missed updates is because I am not able to to be late with those things. So, no, no, I'm not talking about deadlines with my work and stuff like that. I've missed deadlines and 
stuff like that. But when it comes to being late to an appointment and stuff like that, I, I just can't. So making the webcomic, it eventually came to a point where it was, okay, either I upload anything, anything at all, or I miss an update. And in my mind, it was way more bearable to upload just garbage than to miss an update. Now, again, a lot of you might argue this point and, and say that it's better to upload quality instead of quantity and, and, and all those discussions. But, okay, in this story, in my mind, I would have rather uploaded garbage than miss an update. And I grew used to that. And uploading a comic every, every day, uh, you just get used to it. You just get used to uploading. But I do think it taught me something. I, I do think I benefited from this experience. And that's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you something I like to call the throw technique. And it helped me deal with the anxiety of uploading art. And, well, dealing with the fact that, yeah, the, you got to show your art to the world. And you don't know what the world is going to think. And it's, it's heavy stuff. So what is the throw technique? The throw technique is, okay, when you're making art, there's a moment that I like to call the art honeymoon. There's always a moment when you're making an image where you decide that you like the image. This is always going to happen because if you're going to finish the image, at one point during the process... You have to look at the image and make the decision, okay, I like this image enough to finish it, right? So you're making your image, and at some point, you have to think that. You have to think this image is good enough to finish. At that point, you like what you're doing. At that point, you are in love with your image. I like to call that the art honeymoon. And what happens normally, or at least what happens to me, but I know this happens to more people, is that you come to a point where that is lost. The honeymoon's over. You're done with the image, and you look at it, and you start to see all the flaws and all that. And, and it, it makes sense. It makes sense. You've been looking at this image for, well, sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes maybe even more. And you see all the flaws. You see all the mistakes. You see all the stuff that you could have improved. And again, it makes sense. And it's even a good thing. This is, this is a topic for another video. But it makes a lot of sense that when you finish an image, you feel like you could do better. Because think about it. When you make an image, at the end, you have experience making that image. Therefore, you should be able to do it again, but better. But again, we'll talk about that in, in a future video. In any case, at the end you normally are not as happy with the image as you were during the art honeymoon. At some point, you thought, this is great, I'm going to finish this, this is awesome, but then you're done and you're like, yeah, this, this could be better, this could be better, this is not my best work. Now, of course, I've met a lot of artists that don't have that problem, but <laughs> I'd rather have it, I'd rather have it, like, I'd rather be a person that's questioning their own skill all the time than be a person that is just completely lacking in self-awareness. But that's not the topic we're talking about today. So anyway, you're going to come to this art honeymoon and you're going to think that your art is good enough to finish. And by the time you're done, that honeymoon is going to be over. But here's what you do. You set yourself up to throw the image right away. Now, what do I mean by that? You see, the mistake most people make is that when they're done with art, they wait. They wait before posting. They wait before showing it. They wait before sharing it with the world. You finish your art, and then you look at it for a while. Or maybe you're done late, and so, yeah, okay, I'm done, save, go to sleep, Next day, maybe a couple of days later, you open it again, you check it out, and you decide then if you want to upload it or not. But 
at that point, the honeymoon is over. At that point, you're already at that, you know, at that moment when you've decided that you could do better, when you've decided that you could improve, when you decide that, yeah, it's not your best work. You can probably do better than that. There's, you know, there's this and that. And by then, it's too late. And posting your work is going to take tremendous willpower. It's going to take you practically forcing yourself to post your work. And, well, that's no good. A lot of times, we just end up not posting it. We just end up saying, yeah, no, nah, not good enough. Maybe next time. But what you should do is, when you reach the art honeymoon, and you say, okay, this is good. I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to show it. Okay, set yourself up to just throw the image. So what you do is, when the image is done, when the image is complete, before anything else, you throw it. You save, you export the image, don't close it, don't go to bed, don't go do something else. No, no, no. As soon as you're done, the first thing you do, throw it. Throw it away. Fire and forget. As soon as you're done, that's the first thing you do. You throw it. Post it wherever you're going to post it. Post it on, I don't know, Facebook, DeviantArt, ArtStation, Instagram, wherever you're going to post it. Just throw it and then go do something else. This is very important. Don't throw it and sit there and watch it. Think about it as if you were throwing, uh, I don't know, anything, a rock, a ball, uh, a baby. You throw it and after it leaves your hand, it's out of your control. You can't, you can't throw something and after that have any influence on where it's going to land. What, once it leaves your hand, it's out of your control. It makes no difference. It makes no difference at all. You throw it. Once it leaves your hand, where it goes, well, it just, okay, yeah, you threw it. That's it. So do the same thing. When you finish an image, you throw it and you leave. Uh, a lot of times I'll just finish an image, post it, and I don't know, go to the store, buy something to eat, um, go do something else, play a video game, play with my cats, go run some errands, whatever, whatever. You know, there, there's a bunch of stuff that we have to do in life. Just don't throw it and stay there like um, thinking about it or anything like that. Just throw it and forget about it for a while. I mean, of course, not forever, for a while. Just forget about it for a little bit. And I know, I know it sounds incredibly simple. I know it sounds incredibly stupid, but trust me, I've, I've done this. I've done it with my students. It works. You just throw it and forget about it, but you got to throw it right away. That's very important. Don't give yourself time to question it. Don't give yourself time to think about it. Don't give yourself time to um, not like the image. Once you reach the honeymoon, once you've made the decision that this is an image that you're going to finish, as soon as you're done, throw it. Now, I wish I could tell you that I, um, that I don't have any problems anymore posting my work because that's, that's just not true. Like any other person, of course, I have problems posting my work and, for every image that I show, and the truth of the matter is that there's a bunch of images that I never showed anybody. And right now, the image that you're seeing in speed painting, uh, right about when I was doing the sketch of the face, I reached that honeymoon phase where I said, I like this. I like where this is going. Let's, let's do this. But I got to tell you, when I was done with this image, I hated it. And I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it right now as I record this. And I do not like it. Now, this is not this is not for anybody to tell me that you do like it or that it is good or anything like that. No, this happens to us all. Um, this this happens to all of us. We we don't like our own work. We see what we did and we go, ah, yeah. But I don't have an option. You know, I need the image for this video. So in a way, I threw it, right? I made, I recorded this video. I have to upload this 
this YouTube video and my sense of, you know, my, my needing to upload this video is stronger than my need to, to question everything I do. So it gets uploaded no matter what quality it was, no matter if it's good or not. And so I'm inviting you to do the same. The next time you're drawing an image and you reach that point where you say, eh, it's good enough, throw it. Throw it as soon as it's done. Before you do anything else, throw it. And you'll start to get used to it. You'll start to get used to uh, the idea of showing your works to the world. Sure, we're going to have to work on our skills. Sure, we're going to have to get better at what we do. All those things. But... For now, let's deal with that. Let's deal with throwing. So yeah, that's the throw technique. That is uh, the technique I used to get used to showing my work and the technique I've taught to my students to help them get used to show their work. If you have any thoughts, if you have any ideas on the throw technique or on your own methods to share your work. I would love to hear about them. Not just in that kind of YouTube corny, leave a comment below or anything like that. No, no, no. I'm a teacher. I teach art. I'm always <laughs> interested in learning new methods to help people show their work. So if you have anything, uh, if you have any technique of your own or anything like that, I would love to hear about it because that would, of course, help me. Uh, you know, teach my students to show their work. So please share it with me. If you don't want to leave a comment, then you can send me a message or anything like that. And well, this brings us to the end of the video and that whole YouTube thing where I tell you that I have a Twitch channel where I'm OAV normal and you can watch me work live over there or that if you want to support my work or alternatively, if you want a high resolution version of the image that I that you saw in this video, or the line work, or other stuff like that, you can support me on Patreon, where I'm also OAV Normal. You can uh, like the video, you can um, subscribe, that kind of stuff. Uh, great, greatly appreciated all that that I'm supposed to say at the end of the video. But more importantly, please continue making art, and don't forget to be naughty. Goodbye.